Greetings, humans, I'm Retrobot, and you are not. Ha ha hee ho ho. Here I go. Oh. Ouch. Pull me out. Oh boy, Retrobot. It's closing time. Lights out. I'll pull you out tomorrow. Hey, wait. Okay, welcome to video three, ladies and gentlemen, boys and goyles. Now, as you can see, uh, things are getting a little bit uh, thicker here as I progress further into disassembly. Before uh, moving on and, and bathing uh, parts, and I'll throw in a rubber ducky if I can into the tub here. But before moving forward with that, I am just going to um, touch on how the main cam is removed from the uh, subplate assembly. And it's pretty straightforward, but uh, one thing that you need to be aware of, and it's something you would certainly figure out once you start diving into it, but you remember I pointed out this, um, this tone arm lever here with the um, follower pin that uh, rides in the, um, in the track channel or groove, whatever you want to call it, on the cam. Well, you need to um, position the cam. Let me, let me move these aside. Okay, here's the track that the follower pin rides in. And then you have the uh, wall on this side, or ridge. And you see where the ridge drops off, right here. This is the point where you're going to want to align that um, tone arm lever and then swivel it outward so that when you lift this um, main cam up, you know, you're not obviously, you're not going to have that, that tone arm lever in the way. And in doing so, all you do to remove that is um, there's these... Uh, washers and there's one of these uh, e-clips or sur clips whatever you want to call it tomato tomato um, it doesn't matter and i'm gonna get those bagged up and situated in just a moment and anyways and then you lift the main cam straight up off of the uh, cam spindle here and one more thing i will uh, demonstrate here let me just let me just back out and I'll bring the uh, the cam up into view. And as you can see, I have the motors out and all that stuff. So so we're getting into it, guys, in goyles. But anyways, um, yeah, you can see, let me bring this up as close as I can there. You can see how degraded the, uh, the grease is. Let me get this little bearing out of here. But yeah, the grease is very very degraded it becomes really really viscous really thick and that's the whole point as to why you need to again strip these down go in and uh, freshen up everything and also too when you're going through you're going to want to inspect everything you're looking for any uh, excessive wear anything that's bent or damaged in terms of you know like gear teeth or whatever so anyways, um, that's that. Let me go ahead and start uh, start spraying these off for starters. And as I start adding parts in here, I'm going to um, you know get this stuff soaking for a while before I really dive in. And, and what I'm going to use is I have this uh, spray bottle in here. I need to I need to refill it. But what you see here is just um, a concentrated solution fairly concentrated of Dawn dishwashing liquid and just water. I'll start out with a with a you know Dawn as a degreaser and then I'll bring a uh, a brush over and just start um, cleaning everything. I'd be doing this on another bench you know I have a bench that's set aside more for cleaning and detailing a uh, really big bench but um, that's all full with stuff I have synth gear on there taken apart but I have my trusty tray here so you know i'll just start spraying um spraying these down and letting them soak i'll start with that but uh, most of the time believe it or not just with some uh you know dawn dishwashing liquid and a and a brush i could scrub in there and we're as good as new and you know if i have to break out other stuff then of course i will i have oh what's that stuff uh 
simple green or whatever, the uh, concentrated stuff. And, you know, so I have different uh, stuff that I use, cleaners. Oh, by the way, uh, real quick before I um, switch on over to another scene, you can see <laughs> you can see all this uh, all this nastiness all over the motors and all that stuff. So, yeah, as you can see, these um, units were in need of refurbishment. Okay, so everything worked out well as far as cleaning up these uh, main cam gears with Dawn dishwashing liquid. And like I said, that worked well to uh, break up the remaining um, degraded grease. And there was, of course, other crud accumulation and some oxidation and even a little surface rust on a few of these parts. And uh, like I said, everything loosened up pretty good with that little um, you know, nylon brush I was using. And I ended up um, scrubbing off some of the some of the rust with um, with a very fine uh, wire brush, like on these um, these poles here. There was some uh, you know oxidation, a little surface rust. You can even see the pitting there. But anyways, um, it loosened up pretty good. And there were a few little stubborn areas, you know, after I after I rinsed these cam gears off and flushed off all the loose stuff, you know, under some hot water in the sink. And uh, there were a few stubborn little areas, even uh, within uh, a few of these tracks, there was some uh, oxidation and some crud that didn't, uh, that didn't loosen up real well. So I ended up just getting a swab and some denatured alcohol and just um, these small swabs work good for getting in these small grooves and uh, I scrubbed out what remained with denatured alcohol and I could have took a very fine um, uh, wire brush as well and got in there but that wasn't necessary. It, uh, the crap came out okay with just the, the uh, swabs and denatured alcohol so I got that out okay and the surface uh, rust that uh, remained on these parts here I used one of these um, jewelers uh, scratch pens or scratch brushes, whatever scratch pens, and um, it you know these contain a very fine uh, fiberglass fiber, and you can extend those fibers out. You could twist the cap on the back, and these fibers just you know you can see they extend out, but you just leave them as close to the tip as possible, so that you know these fibers are a little bit more rigid the closer you have them in toward the tip and then you just um, just scrub away these work good for cleaning contacts and and other areas where you know you wouldn't use it of course on real heavy uh, rust deposits that's when you would want to start getting more into chemicals like navel jelly or something like that like an acid or something which you would have to apply very very carefully but just for surface rust and dirty contacts, oxidized contacts, tarnished and all that um, in electronics applications or you know electrical contacts and all that or in this case just cleaning these surfaces the scratch pin will work really well and it did. It, it worked uh, good enough to accomplish what I needed to accomplish here and like I said this is uh, ready to go. Once, um, once all the other um, levers and various mechanisms are all squared away then uh, everything will be ready for uh, re-lubrication and reinstallation. Okay so I'm moving forward with disassembly of mechanisms from the subplate chassis there and what I have over here are the two intermediate drive gears and their um, uh, pinion gears here so what these do is just that they're intermediate gears that work between the motor and the main um, cam gear and these drive gears do just that they drive the uh, main cam and of course as a result um, cycling occurs so these intermediate gears are obviously um, crucial and should be working fluidly so um, let me 
quickly just demonstrate how they are removed from the subplate chassis. Very straightforward. And let me just bring the subplate chassis in here so I can keep things in frame somewhat, hopefully. I'll try to glance at the back of the camera as I'm kind of moving around. So anyways, um, all that goes on here is this uh, shaft here just drops down into this hub here and then this smaller uh, bracket shaft here uh, post mates up and drops into the uh, hole of the um, uh, drive release lever or just drive lever and there's a um, washer and a nut that uh, screw screw onto the uh, threaded shaft here and then just a uh, washer and one of those uh, e-clips that um, clip onto here so when you remove both the uh, nut and the washer um, clip and the washer then this assembly just lifts out okay so as simple as that and I'm obviously going to break these down further I will also be removing the um, the pinion gear and I want to just get everything nice and clean nice and smooth okay so we're even further in so the um, intermediate uh, gear assemblies over here are all completed all cleaned and ready for uh, re-lubrication and reinstall right now uh, you can see I have both subplate chassis in the bath and I'm to the point where I have removed both of these um, tone arm uh, pivot assemblies or bases okay so all that's really involved in um, removing these um, tone arm uh, pivot assemblies or bases is just two screws uh, you can see the holes on the actual um, base itself and um, here's the two screw holes on the um, top side of the uh, subplate okay and the two screws these two here actually um, serve two purposes there's this support bracket here okay that keeps these tone arm lift levers uh, in alignment kind of holds them in place supports them and on the other side here is where the tone arm pivot assembly mounts okay and this um, uh, pivot shaft or tube right here see that just drops down into this hole here and then everything just lines up uh, like so and the screws like I said drop in from the other side through that support bracket so once you remove those screws this um, assembly here just lifts out so nothing to it not a big deal now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to further um, break this down. A matter of fact, let me um, real quick just um, I think that's loose enough. I could probably do the rest. Yeah, I could do the rest just by hand here. Yeah. Okay. So these two um, bolts here, they just uh, remove from the um, the clutch boss here. This this is a clutch assembly, tone arm clutch assembly. And then um, then this will slide on out. Yeah, it just slides on out after that. Okay. And then your left with the base here and then that um, 
uh, tone arm, um, you know, pivot shaft or tube right here, just slides right out. Um, this nut here is the uh, part that the um, tone arm itself mounts to. You can see where the set screw has left that um, indentation there. Okay, and then I'll just set the base aside. And um, again, this um, this uh, pivot shaft or tube is where the uh, lift spindle, the tone arm lift spindle, uh, slots into. And again, when you have the tone arm uh, mounted, this is the uh, the lift uh, spindle here that raises and lowers the uh, tone arm. Okay, so obviously it's important that the um, shaft here is nice and clean, that the spindle is nice and clean, that it's uh, void of any degraded lubricants or anything like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down the, uh, the clutch assembly further. Um, there's this uh, nut and the screw here. I'll remove that, take these apart, and just make sure everything is clean, uh, lubricated appropriately, uh, where needed. And I'm going to... I'm going to do that obviously to both mechanisms now. The last thing I want to point out is that these subplates, now that I have everything removed that, I, that I've already removed, that I've shown already, um, you can see here that the remaining levers and all that are such, you know, I, I have good access now. I can clean everything in place. Uh, if anything was damaged, any of these levers were damaged or whatever, then yes, I would remove them and straighten things out, do what I have to do, but everything looks good, so um, I could just... Uh, fill my tray up with some um, again some degreaser I'll probably use Dawn and just again a little brush and just kind of clean everything up real good and go from there so I could clean the rest in place and then in the next video I will come back when everything is cleaned up and we'll start reassembling and um, going into a little bit of a lubrication there what I'm using for this what I'm using for that and talk a little bit more about uh, critical aspects of the uh, reassembly that are important to know. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, critical functions and whatnot. So I'm going to end this video here because I want to keep these videos a little shorter and introduce them in segments. And um, these turntables are going to be more involved. When I get into working on the uh, amplifiers and all that stuff, that's going to be pretty straightforward because that's just going to involve some component replacement, caps and that sort of thing. But this, as you can see, because of the mechanical aspect, was more involved. So next video, reassembly, um, some lubrication and some talk on function. And then at the end, when everything is put back together, slapped on in, including the um, motors, which I'm also going to talk about in the next video. Going in, You can see I have it already. Uh, uh, in the disassembly phase, I'm going to start cleaning, relubricating as necessary. And then that's why in the next video, toward the end, we'll actually go into a, uh, a rough um, function test. Rough meaning just a power up, make sure everything is um, rotating, that the platter is looking good, that everything is cycling good, uh, minus... Um, fine adjustments that will, that will probably be needed, maybe even some bigger adjustments, I don't know. But um, that will probably, depending on how the, the final test goes, if there's something really wrong or something that needs, you know, a lot of adjusting or what whatnot, I might make a little short video in addition, just going into, um, you know, adjusting everything. Uh, so let's just see what happens there. But otherwise, everything might go together and, and work just fine. But um, at the very least, we'll do a rough test, you know, power up and and uh, get everything kind of cycling and see what needs to be adjusted, like I said. So anyways, I'm going to cut this video here. And um, that's about it. So till the next video, you guys, take care, peace, love. Music, 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 music